Hello, I'm Gabriel Beavers, bassoonist with the Palm Beach Symphony. I'd like to take a moment to show you how to properly disassemble and clean your bassoon. Here in Florida, where the humidity is very high year-round, we have to be especially careful to keep the inside of our bassoon dry when we put it away. Otherwise, we can grow mold and mildew and bacteria inside there. The first thing I do is remove my vocal and I blow air from the large side of the vocal to the small side, removing any excess moisture. I then tap the vocal, my pant leg, to make sure there's no moisture left in there, or as little as possible, and put it away in my case. Then I disassemble the rest of the bassoon in the order, reverse order of when I put it together, starting with the bell. the long joint, and if you have any trouble with getting the joints apart, you try to gently rock and twist, mainly rocking, until they come free. The long joint. Now both of those joints are dry joints. They're not supposed to have any moisture in them. They're on the ascending side of the bassoon. The bassoon has a U-tube here at the bottom where all the moisture from the descending side collects. So this is the part of the bassoon we have to be especially careful with keeping dry. I'll now remove the wing joint, which is the small joint at the top, and put it away. And with the boot joint, I'm going to turn the small wet side of the boot joint away from me and pour any condensation out. The next thing I'm gonna do is take my boot swab, which is typically a um, silk or cotton swab with a heavy weight at one end and I'm going to put it through the large side of the boot, let it fall to the bottom and turn the boot joint sideways guiding that weight through the U-tube at the bottom of the boot joint helping it to fall back through the wet side of the bassoon because we're going to pull from the dry side to the wet side and I'm going to pull the swab about this far and stop. That way part of it is inside the U-tube. I'm going to let it sit there for just a couple of seconds and then pull a little more, a couple more seconds and then finally pull it all the way through and before you've completely removed the swab I like to take my index finger and go inside the um, small side of the bassoon and swab out any moisture that may have collected in the tenon socket where we put the wing joint. Now that's not the last thing we do with the boot joint if you want to keep your bassoon in good shape. You need to try to remove any moisture that's in this C-sharp trill key. What we do is we put our face over the small side and suck in air through the large side while covering all the finger holes and with the inside of this index finger tapping that key. What that does is that brings moisture or air in from the outside removing any moisture in the hole and bringing it into the lined side of the boot joint. I can then swab one more time. Over the years I have taken the YouTube off of my bassoon to see how well I swab with just one pass and I can tell you almost always one pass does not remove enough moisture. So I repeat the procedure of using my index finger to clean out the tenon socket and this joint's pretty good ready to put away but if you have a little bit of extra time, you should also take a microfiber cloth and wipe down the keys, remove any excess oils from your skin on the keys. Okay, we can now put the boot joint away. I'm gonna pull the wing joint out and we have a separate swab for the wing joint. This is very, very, very important. You never use anything but a wing swab and a wing joint. And my personal recommendation is, is to get a silk pull-through swab that has a long tail on it like this in case it gets stuck that you can pull back the other direction. So I'm going to go from the large side of the wing joint 
to the small side, drop this weight, it has a smaller weight than the other swab, and pull through until you get it halfway up and let it sit for a second. I still have this in case this gets stuck. I'm gonna pull, and I can tell from years of doing this that this swab's fine, it's not getting stuck. But if you have any doubt at all, you would grab this and pull back the other way because you don't want to get the swab stuck. So I'm going to pull all the way through. I know it's going well. Done. Now, you might think we're done. We swapped. If you look down the bore, that's the long air passage down the center of this joint, you're going to see a dry bore. But you have to try to remove the moisture from all these little keys here, 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 and these holes. If you don't, over the years, you'll get a precipitate that builds up inside those and actually occludes the openings, changing the tuning of your bassoon. So what you do is with a dry bore, you cover the large side with your mouth, the small side with your finger, and create suction. Once you've created that suction, you lift the keys off the holes, releasing air into the bore. That you won't be able to get suction if you don't cover these three keys, by the way, with your left hand. Now, those keys are not enough. Or the, when I say those keys, I mean those tone holes. Those three tone holes are not enough. You also have to press down on all the vent keys and do the same procedure. Now, once you've done all that, you can look down the bore of your bassoon again, and you should hopefully only see tiny microscopic, not microscopic, but very small bubbles of water that have come up from all those um, holes. You then take your swab one more time through the wing joint. Check it again, and if it's dry, you're good. You can put it away except for perhaps taking your microfiber cloth and wiping down the keys. Another good practice is to take a detail brush or a toothbrush, one that's not used, that's been set aside for this purpose, and clean any dust out from under the keys. That doesn't have to be done every time you play though, but it maybe once a week, once a month, you're done. Now your bassoon should be dry and ready to go the next time. If you don't keep it swabbed out like that, you will eventually get wood rot, ruin your bassoon. You're gonna get mold, mildew, a terrible smell in your case. But by doing this, your bassoon should last you and other generations to come. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. I look forward to being able to play for you in a concert hall soon.